Hey everybody, this is Kian. In this video, I want to do two things. First, I'll give you an update on what I've been up to for the last year now, ever since my concert life essentially stopped, or let's say was heavily reduced. And in the second part, we'll do a traditional old-fashioned Q&A question-answer segment. So stay until the second part if you want to hear that. I have always loved arranging. And I have done some arranging in the past, particularly for cello ensemble, which is a genre which I love very much. But over the years, with my busy concert schedule that I started to have, there was less and less time for arranging. Until one year ago, where all of this craziness started and my concert life basically disappeared or was, let's say, heavily reduced. So suddenly I had a lot of time again and I started to really obsessively <laughs> arrange every day. I worked for hours and hours on it and I started to come up with an idea for an entire album of arrangements and I approached my label which is Deutsche Grammophon and they loved the idea. So the project was born and this whole thing took one year. Why did it take so long? Because the type of arrangements are not traditional cello solo arrangements. The way it ended up sounding, if you listen to it when it will be out, it sounds like a whole orchestra, or let's say a, an army of cellists playing at the same time. But it's all played by me only. So the way I did it, I would play one voice and then put the second one on top and the third and the fourth, layering them on top of each other. 20, 30, 40, at some point even 50 voices at the same time, all only cello, also percussive elements, a lot of percussion on the cello without the damaging, of course, a lot of special effects, but everything only cello sounds. Everything that you will hear at the end will be only cello and only played by me. This was, of course, very time consuming because I did the arrangements first at home. I recorded them here just to have an idea. And then we re-recorded all of it one more time in a professional studio in Berlin to get that really, really high quality sound. And I'm really happy with how it sounds now. As for repertoire, if you know me a little bit, you know I'm crazy about movies. So of course it had to be film music. Uh, so it's one hour of epic, epic film music, particularly movies that I grew up with that mean a lot to me. And if you're a 90s kid like I am, you will really love the choice of movies. They're really epic cool blockbusters, slightly nerdy maybe also. It's really amazing music. I, I, I love this music since I'm a child, all throughout my teenage years until now. And, and it was really amazing to bring that into the cello world. And I cannot wait for you all to hear it. The album will come out this year. And in a few months already, the first single will drop and then a couple more singles after that until the whole album will be available. So just watch this space here. I will constantly give you updates and also maybe show you some more behind the scenes stuff on how the process of arranging was, but more on that in some future videos. For now, let's get into the Q and A's. Apart from big work, talent and luck, which are the main components for starting a decent increase in a solo musician career? What's your experience? That's a very good question. And I think we all agree that luck and talent and hard work, obviously without those, it's basically impossible. But there is one more aspect, which is very important, is the social aspect of having a musician's career in general, be it solo or anything else. A lot of music, most of it is with other people. You have to interact with other people, be it musicians on stage, if it's chamber music, or even um, if it's with orchestra, of course, with conductors, with managers, with promoters, with concert hall organizers. It's a lot of social things are involved, so it definitely helps if you are a social person and, and if you're not this is something that you can develop and you can work on and it also helps if you're a friendly person if you're a person that people want to speak to that they want to be around if you are an easygoing not too complicated person that definitely helps music is about communication and being a communicative person certainly will help you faster along your way it's possible of course to make a career without speaking to anybody 
there is examples of, of very antisocial artists which are very famous, but I'm saying it's probably easier if you are a social person that is easy to be around. How do you weekly prepare for a recital? Do you play the whole program every day or do you divide it in a certain manner? Yes, if it's a recital that is coming up, certainly every day is quite important that you work through your whole program every day. But if it's a bigger program, let, let's say for a competition or something, and it's really not possible to put it all in one day, then divide it up into two days where you split the whole program, one day this and the second day the rest. So you should really make sure that you practice through your whole program at least, at least every second day. Like this you make the fastest, most consistent progress with your program. Would you tell us about your experience with stage fright and how you overcome it? That's also a good question and actually there is another video on my channel which goes quite in depth about this topic, stage fright and how to prepare and overcome it. Uh, it's called the Hulk technique. I can give you just a very short summary. Essentially, the idea is to visualize yourself being on stage as often as you can. While you practice, try to imagine being on stage so that feeling of being on stage becomes a familiar feeling. So when it's time to actually be on stage, you're not afraid of it anymore, but you can actually embrace it and take something which is negative and turn it into something which is positive. It can also mean performing as often as you can. It doesn't have to be Carnegie Hall. It can be at home for your friends, for your cat, for your family. It doesn't matter. As long as you convince yourself that this is an actual performance, it counts. You can trick your brain. It doesn't actually have to be a performance. But if you believe it is, then it will be a performance. What's your warm-up routine before playing? Any particular scales? So yeah, scales every morning, definitely. I don't skip a day where I don't play scales. It has something almost meditative in the morning to play scales. And I would definitely recommend everybody to play scales every morning. It's great to, you know, wake up your ears, wake up your fingers, and to really have those in-tune notes saved in your brain for the whole day, like a repertoire of notes that you have now gathered, and you can use them for the pieces which you will practice that day. How much is the age important for beginning music? Well, I would lie if I would say it's not important at all because sort of it is of course important, it does play a role. It's sort of like learning a language. It is possible to learn Russian when you're 50, but it is so much easier to learn it when you're six years old. And with music it's the same. It can become like a mother tongue for you. If you're born in a house where music is played all day long, when your parents are musicians or you just learn a musical instrument from a very early age on, it's like learning a language as a child. It just becomes a language, a part of you, and you don't have to think about it even anymore. Learning a language later is a bit tricky. It's possible. I just would think it requires probably more work than if you learn it as a child. What influences would you say being taught by Ivan Monigetti had on your playing? Yeah, so I studied with Ivan Monigetti for 11 years in Basel and it definitely is the biggest influence on me as a musician and a cellist. I learned so much from him. I consider him my main teacher, definitely. One thing I definitely remember about his lessons was the all-inclusive aspect of them. It was never just about playing the cello. It was always about literature, um, movies, books, the piano as well, um, singing, dancing, movement, speaking, it was all involved always. And also the other thing is when you go on stage to have a message that you want to bring across, that you are some sort of messenger of music and that you're on a mission to transmit something through our performances. And he really worked a lot with me on that and that is something that has stayed with me definitely ever since. How can we improve musicality? I would say by listening to a lot of music that you like and understanding what makes it so great. If there is a particular moment in a piece where you're like, wow, this was really special now. This, how did he do that? Just ask yourself, how did he actually do that? Was it the timing? Did he take some particular time there to make this phrase special? Was it the the vibrato, was it the dynamics, was it the harmonies, what was it that made this moment so special? Once you understand what it was, you can try to achieve that in your playing and at first it will maybe sound like you're imitating somebody but if you gather a lot of inspiration then out of that will come your own voice 
and it will be a musical voice. And so I would say definitely listen to a lot of things and try to understand them. That's how you improve your mus musicality. Did you travel to Iran? I did travel to Iran. I was very, very young, however. I was 10 years old when I was there the last time. That's already 18 years ago now. I know that's a long time ago. Once things go slightly back to normal, it's definitely on top of my priority list to manage to go to Iran one day and play a concert, a couple of them maybe, give master classes and meet all of you great young Iranian musicians looking forward. Any hobbies you've taken up recently? I was never a flower person. All my plants would always die on me, but since one year, since I have so much time, I really started to like taking care of plants. So now my apartment is full of plants and I really like taking care of them. So I guess now uh, my new hobby is gardening or something like that. What are your top five film and or video game scores? Very tough, very tough. Let me just name a few. For video game, I would say Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time definitely has to be on the top. Uh, it's absolutely amazing music and particularly great because the music plays such a big role in the game. It's like a character in the game. So yeah, amazing, absolutely. Recently, the 2018 game God of War had an amazing soundtrack. I really love that as well really touching. The Spider-Man game that came out the same year was really also great with the music. As for movies, anything John Williams wrote is always a masterpiece. Hans Zimmer, obviously I love very much, uh, you know, his Inception, Interstellar soundtracks, Pirates of the Caribbean, particularly the third movie had an amazing soundtrack by Hans Zimmer. I love that one very much. The Lord of the Rings trilogy, the music by Howard Shore, incredible, absolutely amazing. The Godfather movies, Nino Rota, amazing music, and so on. I could go on forever. I'm, I love film music, obviously, as you will hear on my next album. <laughs> Can you make a music video with Hauser? <laughs> I'm just waiting for his call. It's, it can only be days. Could you show us your best magic trick? I used to be very much into magic tricks, actually, particularly with cards, but somehow I haven't done this in years, so I don't want to perform it on camera. Maybe. Maybe I'll practice it a bit and do something in a future video, who knows. Last question would be, can you show us your process of working on your project, on your special project? I will show you the process, but not in this video, maybe in a future video. So do subscribe to this channel and I will start posting more videos here in the future since I have some more time now. My project is finished, finally it took up so much of my time and now I can maybe try to do some other creative things. So thanks so much for watching this video and maybe you, you will see more of me here in the future. And if you have some other questions, leave them below and see you soon. Bye.